to time out here for just a minute. Most of us, all of you in this room this morning, instinctively know if I don't want to be thirsty, I drink water. If I don't want to be hungry, I eat food. And if I don't want my family attacked or murdered, I own a gun. But Washington, D.C., they get the last one backwards, which gives murderers a decided advantage over homeowners. Next month, the Supreme Court will rule on D.C.'s gun ban. But make no mistake, the National Rifle Association will not consider it a victory until the day when the law-abiding residents of Washington, D.C. can once again go out and buy a gun and take back their city from the criminals and the municipal ruling class that took it away from them. The Big Apple is another place the underclass is denied any role in their personal safety. They're kept dependent by the billionaire ruling class in the name of the mayor of that city, Mike Bloomberg. Listen, New York City, in that city, only one in 10 felony arrests ever sees a judge or a courtroom. Only one in a thousand misdemeanor cases ever gets to a courtroom. And a new epidemic of home invasions is terrorizing residents across Long Island. But Bloomberg's not concerned with prosecuting criminals. Oh, no. He's too busy bankrolling litigation designed to take away your firearms rights and bankrupt an American firearms industry. Now Bloomberg's got Walmart stigmatizing lawful gun buyers by lining them up, taking their pictures, and storing all their photographs in a database all because Walmart wants to put stores in New York City. So thanks to the billionaire ruling class, Walmart's shooting mug shots of deer hunters in Louisville so Walmart can sell baby food and diapers in Queens. Then there's the breeding ground of the global ruling class at the United Nations where the pompous sheikhs and kings and autocrats and sultans and czars and despots and billionaire tyrants like George Soros are determined to dumb down American freedom to some standard of no freedom. That club of global elites says, not only do individuals have no right of self-defense, the United Nations says, that any nation that condones gun rights, your rights here this morning, is committing a human rights violation. So the UN wants to force on the world what DC forces on its residents. You give up your guns and you hope that the government somehow will be there to protect you. And here is what this is really all about. If they can institutionalize all of this at the United Nations, then they have permanent funding for a permanent campaign to establish a permanent system to disarm and subjugate citizens all over the world, including the United States. And we all know where that leads. Wars kill soldiers, but governments kill civilians, like the gassing of the Kurds, the slaughter in Rwanda, the butchery in Libya, the killing fields of Cambodia, Uganda, Iraq, and Iran. In the last century alone, 
The last century alone, 56 million civilians were disarmed, rounded up, and murdered by their governments. It's happening today, right now, this morning, as you sit in this room, with almost a half a million dead and millions more dying in Burma, where the military regime is, it has intercepted international aid to save the regime's friends and to deny it and starve their enemies. That's the end result of anyone trusting the global ruling class to protect you. Of all the places where good people are denied the right to protect themselves against bad people, probably the most tragic results have come at the hands of the academic ruling class at our schools and colleges. The Safe School Initiative by the United States Secret Service studied three dozen major attacks at schools. Among the important findings, and now listen to this from the Secret Service, students almost always know an attack is coming. In one case, two dozen kids waited on a mezzanine to watch one of those kids even brought a camera with him. In reality, according to the Secret Service study, cops stop only one out of four attacks. Three out of four attacks are stopped by a teacher or administrator because they're over in less than 15 minutes. And lastly, in 93% of the cases, the attacker behaved weird enough prior to the attack to cause concern from teachers and students. Friends, these facts clearly argue for armed security in our schools.